Make sure to subscribe with post notifications on or this will appear in your bedroom tomorrow night. NFTs are taking the world by storm. In the times where we are left with no choice but to study how to earn money at our homes, NFTs introduced a whole new level of industry. But where did it all begin? Let's first start off by describing what NFT are. A non-fungible token is merely a one-of-a-kind digital asset. Bitcoin is fungible, which means that all Bitcoins are identical and entirely interchangeable. A work of art is an example of a non-fungible token. I can have two identical works of digital art, but each one is completely distinct. Now that we've established what NFTs are, we can delve into their lengthy history. One may claim that colored coins were the first NFTs to appear in 2012. Colored coins are formed of small Bitcoin denominations and can be as small as a single Satoshi, the smallest unit of a Bitcoin. Colored coins can be used to represent a wide range of assets and have a variety of applications, including property, coupons, the ability to issue your own coin, the issuance of company shares, subscriptions, access tokens, and digital collectibles. Colored coins showed a significant advancement in Bitcoin's capabilities. Nevertheless, their disadvantage was that they could only represent specific values if everyone agreed on their worth. Colored coins were only as powerful as their weakest member because Bitcoin's scripting language was never intended to allow this type of behavior within its network. For example, three persons agree that 100 color coins equal 100 company shares. If even one member determines that colored coins no longer represent firm shares, the entire system collapses. In 2014, many individuals became aware of the enormous potential for issuing assets into blockchains as a result of the launch of colored coins. People also realized that Bitcoin in its existing form was not intended to support these new functionalities. Counterparty was founded in 2014 by Robert Dermody, Adam Krillenestein, and Evan Wagner as a peer-to-peer -peer banking platform and distributed open-source internet protocol built on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. Counterparty enabled asset creation as well as a decentralized exchange and a crypto coin with the ticker XCP. It had a lot of projects and assets such as a trading card game and meme trading. By 2015, Spells of Genesis designers were not only the first to issue in-game assets into a blockchain via Counterparty, but they were also among the first to launch an ICO. So early in fact that ICOs were dubbed crowdfunding, Spells of Genesis supported development by issuing a cryptocurrency known as BitCrystals, which served as the in-game currency. In 2016, Counterparty collaborated with popular trading card game Force of Will to release their cards on the Counterparty platform. Force of Will was the fourth best-selling card game in North America after only Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! and Magic the Gathering. Because Force of Will was a huge mainstream firm with no prior blockchain or cryptocurrency experience, this occurrence was significant. Their inclusion in the ecosystem demonstrated the advantages of storing such assets on a blockchain. Today, Counterparty has numerous projects built on its platform and many of them involve NFT-like assets. In 2017, with the rise of Ethereum in popularity in early 2017, memes began to be traded there as well. In March 2017, Papyrium, a decentralized meme marketplace and trading card game, TCG, that enables anyone to generate memes that live eternally on IPFS and Ethereum, was revealed. Papyrium, like Counterparty, had an associated token with the ticker symbol RARE, which was used for meme production and payment of listing fees. 2018 and 2019 have seen massive growth with NFT's ecosystem. There are already over 100 products in the space with more in the works. NFT marketplaces are flourishing with OpenSea and Super Rare gaining traction. In comparison to other crypto marketplaces, trade volumes are minor but they are developing quickly and have come a long way. As Web3 wallets such as MetaMask improve, it is becoming easier to enter the NFT ecosystem. Dapper Labs have also just released a Dapper wallet that does not require gas charges. 
Furthermore, there are now websites like nonfungible.com and nftcryptonews.com that go into NFT market stats, gameplay tips, and general information on the field. In 2021, according to Marketplace data, the market for non-fungible tokens NFTs, reached new highs in the second quarter. With 2.5 billion in sales so far this year, up from just 13.7 million in the first half of 2020. After NFTs surged in popularity earlier this year, sales volumes have remained high. In June 2021, monthly sale volumes for OpenSea, a major NFT marketplace, reached an all-time high. Some NFT collectors regard them as collectibles with intrinsic value due to their cultural significance, while others regard them as investments. Betting on rising prices According to nonfungible.com, which aggregates NFT transactions on the Ethereum blockchain, Buyers have outnumbered sellers by a margin of 10,000 to 20,000 every week since March. And it only goes above that. The future is unpredictable for NFTs, but I guess we'll see. That is all we have for you all today. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more content like this and much more. We will see you guys next time. Take care until then. Goodbye everyone.